Hello, and welcome to the program. I'm Gary, and this is my wife, Drenda. We are so glad you joined us today because today is a special day. And what, why, Drenda? Tell us why because it's a special today day. Today, we're celebrating the wonderful, amazing, yes. brave men and women who've taken this journey with us over uh, the yes. years, months, weeks, and even days to help this message of the kingdom go across the world. And of course, we're talking about our partners, you. Awesome. That's right. We would not be doing what we're doing, Dren, without you. And of course, the kingdom message is going across the world, and we get emails from all over every day of lives that have been transformed by the kingdom, which reminds us our lives were transformed by the I mean, transformed. Yes. Nine years, severely in debt, panic attacks, antidepressants, IRS liens, judgments, canceled credit cards, shame and stress and hopelessness. Yeah, it was a hard time. And we were trying to figure out what are we doing wrong? We love God, but why is it that we don't see the promises in his word coming to pass in our life? And as God began to teach us about his kingdom and we saw our lives transformed, then we wanted to tell everyone well, about the kingdom. You said the word kingdom. At that time, I didn't, we didn't have the revelation of kingdom. Uh, the only time I heard of kingdom was in the Lord's Prayer, and that's the only time I heard of it. But we were believers. We loved God. Uh, we loved the anointing. We were baptized in the Holy Spirit, loved church. We went to uh, Bible school. Had Bible we went school, to Old Roberts degree, University. Uh, yes. An Old Testament degree, but could not get heaven to manifest in our life. I could see what it said. I mean, I could see what the Bible said, and I could agree with what the Bible said, but I couldn't get it to manifest what it said in our lives, especially at that time in the financial area. I mean, right. we, were, we were sinking right. slowly, but it right. was... We never had enough money to put, uh, fill the car up with gas. No. We were living in an old 1800s farmhouse, which we were renting for $300 a oh, month. Yeah. Uh, but a it was just a struggle. Then, Every day us. was like, how will, we, how will we pay our bills this month? Right, how will right. we do? Stress. Part of that is that we bought the world system of debt Yep. and had bought into that, but just trying to survive. But then also we didn't understand the kingdom, God's didn't. system. And we didn't even know there was two no, systems. No, no, we, we didn't have that clear. In fact, it was not until we just reached bottom that God spoke to me one day and said, hey, you're in this mess because you never learned how my kingdom operates. And I of remember. Course that, yeah, well, I went straight to you. And of course, I repented to God. I repented to you and said, okay, God just told us the answer, but I don't know what it means. We're, we've got to figure this out. What, right. what does it mean by kingdom? How does his kingdom work? And so we began <laughs> to study it and began to learn that a kingdom is not a mob of people, but it's a government, and a government operates by laws. The authority of the king travels down through every citizen through a system of govern, government and laws. And when I discovered that when, that, when I got that bit of insight, I realized I could learn the laws. Mm. And so I began to read the Bible different, began to apply the principles. And of course, then we got out of debt two and a half years, built our dream house, began paying cash for everything, um, and sensed, started businesses. Uh, we were like, the, everyone uh, has to hear yeah, this. We everyone were so, has I to mean, know. We were like kids in a candy store. I yeah. mean, it's like, I mean, we had to pinch ourselves every day. It's like, wow, did you see that happen? Did you see this happen? It started when we had this revelation that God spoke to me about the kingdom. He used something very simple to catch my attention. We prayed, God, show us what you mean. And of course, you know, I love to hunt, been hunting our whole life. And uh, at that time, we needed the, the venison, you know, but I, wouldn't, I wasn't getting any venison. I, I was going out, but not getting any deer. And uh, amazingly, God said to me that uh, shortly after he spoke that, why don't you let me help you with your deer hunting? I thought that was kind of strange. It's like, <laughs> how are you going to help me with my deer hunting? And he said this, take a check, write, you know, sew it, write on the check what it's for, come into agreement with you for my buck, that you're my deer, and then send it to a ministry that I tell you to send it to. And uh, we did that. And of course, within 40 minutes, uh, very strange circumstances, we don't have time to discover. You went here, out hunting. <laughs> went out and in 40 minutes had my buck, like just simple, like it's supposed to happen, like clockwork. And of course... That's been, what, 35 years ago or so, and every year it happens like that. I've watched it. <laughs> so the kingdom, I, and then I realized if it worked for the deer, of course, we did that several years. You, got, you gained confidence in that because mm -hmm. your first time you think, well, that was weird. 
but then we gained confidence. But we began to apply what God was showing us to finances. Yes, I love how God takes something that's important to you and you can have a victory in that area mm -hmm. and then you can begin to see, it's like the lights come on and you see how that can impact your finances too. Right. How, how the kingdom can impact every area. So God started with something that you enjoy, something that right. you weren't having success at because it seems like when you're not having success, yeah. it's kind of across the board, right? Yeah. It's in one area, it's in another area, it's in every area. And that when God showed you this area, to use his uh, word and to apply his word to. It was personal, it was intimate, it spoke to your heart. Then we realized, wait a minute, I remember you saying, if this will work for hunting, why wouldn't it work yeah. for every area of finances? So we can dive into the principles because we see the story, but you can see stories in the Bible as well. And you're, you should be asking questions as we discuss this because the issue is, okay, how did that happen? Okay, so I read the story in the Bible, how, what laws brought that to pass? What laws brought the deer, you know, in different stories? So I want to point out one of the key principles, as we said at the beginning of the show, one of the key principles in what actually I was doing, which I didn't know what I was doing when God said, take a check and sow it, was I was operating under the law of partnership. Now, we find this same principle, Drenda, in Luke chapter 5. You remember P Peter, James, and John are fishermen, and they went out fishing in Luke chapter 5 uh, all night and caught nothing, the Bible says. Mm. And so Jesus walking along the shore sees the boat sitting there and the fishermen are washing their nets. They're done. I mean, they're finished for the, for the day, right? They fish at night. And so he asked to borrow one of the boats. It was Peter's boat. And so Peter let him have the boat. They went out. Jesus preached from it. But then before they came back in, Jesus said, put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Well, Peter said, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, mm. we'll let down the nets. That's an important phrase, because you say mm. so. When they'd done so, they caught such a large number of fish, their nets began to break. Wow. So they signaled their partners, catch this phrase, they signaled their partners, now where are they at? They're on the beach, on, on the, the shore. On the shore. That's the Bible. The both boats were on the shore, it says, and they were washing their nets. So Peter is signaling the other boat that's on the shore and his partners to come out. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come out and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full they began to sink. Mm -hmm. Their nets are about breaking. Their boats are now sinking. But here is the question that has to be answered. If you're talking about legal jurisdiction and the kingdom operating, I understand Peter is the one that said, because you said so. Mm -hmm. His boat filled up. Why did James and John's boat fill up? How much faith did they exercise in their boat filling up? Just enough to obey. That's all the faith it took, just to obey and go obey out who? there. To obey his command, come out. Peter. Yeah, Peter. That was just out. Peter. I mean, yes. Peter said, come and help me. Right. They did nothing. As far as faith is concerned, right. they just, oh my God, you know, come out and just get these fit. You know, they filled both boats and both boats filled identically the same full to the sinking point. So the question is, okay, how much faith we agreed? They didn't exercise faith at all. So we have to ask a question. Why did their boat fill up the same as Peter's who exercised faith? They were business partners. Exactly. The text <laughs> says they were partners in this business. When Peter gave Jesus the boat, it was the business's boat, the partnership's boat, which they had two boats. The entire business came under the jurisdiction of the kingdom of God, Jesus and his assignment. The anointing on that assignment came on both boats, not just Peter's. And so they filled exactly the same. And so when we sowed that day for that deer, to the ministry that God showed us, we are now coming into partnership with that other ministry and the anointing on that ministry now becomes our anointing yes. and that agreement produces based not just on our faith, but on their faith as well. Yes, and that's the way partnership is. That is. When we're preaching and teaching the kingdom of God, we're carrying this kingdom message out. Not only does it have impact uh, on those that are hearing, but those that engage it as our partners and get involved with it, they're actually carrying out God's business assignment 
taking care of father's business, and then father, God begins to take care of theirs. He begins to take care That's of yours. Good. That's it. So when you're engaged in what God is doing, then you are inviting his presence, his anointing, and actually his calling and anointing on you to teach this kingdom message and me to the ends of the earth. That brings that same anointing, that same blessing mm -hmm. on your business, on your life, on your finances, because we become partners, but we're more importantly becoming partners with God who That's put right. this ministry in, enacted it and put it out and anointed and called us to teach the kingdom to the ends of the earth. Yeah. You become a part of that when you partner. When you think of partnership in business, you both share in the profits. Mm -hmm. And so when you partner with God's assignment, again, you become partners. I think partnership from a religious mindset is I need money and I want you to help me get done what I need to get done. That's not partnership. That's just giving. Partnership's different in the sense that the partners that are coming together understand the principle of partnership. And so we're going to join in partnership. The anointing that God has placed, for instance, on our ministry, our assignment, as you said, becomes theirs. But to truly partner, we want the partners to understand what's actually happening. I always say it this way, how's my business doing? You know, I'd say to a business owner that partners, they would say, how's my ministry going? They could mm -hmm. say, because we're partners, I'd say, how's, how's my business doing, right? Yes. Because we're sharing together in this partnership. And if we have that mindset of what it really is, that's going to change everything. Yes. It's prophets, priests, and kings unto our God mm -hmm. all coming together around the same assignment and fulfilling that. And the grace that's on our life yes. becomes your grace yeah. is when we are not only receiving, but now we're able to change lives through the power of the kingdom of God by sharing it. And that's the grace that comes on you. Yeah. And again, like I said, we have a great story coming up. I'm so excited to share it with you. And isn't it really about stories? Isn't it really about seeing the kingdom actually do what it says in the Bible? It's about changed lives. It's about changed lives. Transformation. Exactly. It's about transformed lives. Absolutely. That's what God is looking for to touch people. That's what he cares about. Finances really are part of a function of the earth, but God is looking to touch lives and hearts. And you do that. We do that as we teach the kingdom of God and God's love for people. And we have so many amazing stories of how this kingdom has changed and transformed lives. One of those stories is Johnny and Ruth Miller. And we want to share that story with you right now. And when we come back, Gary and I would like to pray with you because God wants to cause impact in your life from his kingdom just as well. I had gone to the doctor and found out that I had um, a polyp that needed removed and ended up being a big deal. And they said, um, you have stage four cancer and here's what we recommend. And so one of it was doing chemo for six months and then um, see what happens after that. While I was in that process is when I would be laying on the couch resting. After chemo treatments, I would be exhausted and then started watching Fixing the Money thing. I was looking on Christian TV and started listening and I'm like, this is, this is what we've been looking for. I literally had stopped dreaming. I had dreams in my heart that I'd just given up because, well, when you're just on the hamster wheel and you're working as hard as you can and nothing's really changing, how are you gonna dream for anything more? And that's exactly where we were. I hated debt. And so I would have just loved to find a way to fix this money thing. Just the title caught my attention. And then when I heard he was in New Albany and you know, it's like, there's a possibility here. This is our 27th year in business as an excavating business. And our business is always seasonal. It slows down in the winter time. And we always struggled with even making payroll and things like that during January, February, March, when winter was at its worst. And so when we started listening to Pastor Gary and the things that he would say, we just felt like, man, this is, this is something that we really have to get connected to. Like Gary says, you gotta be a spiritual scientist and, and dig for yourself and find why or whatever. And I remember I, I read the scriptures and 
would take the scriptures that he would teach with and I would I would look them up and see if he was right. And all made sense to me. One of the biggest things we've learned is the authority that God has given us in the earth realm. That's what we were lacking was the knowledge of the authority that we actually have in the earth realm. When I went back for a checkup after I had gone through all my chemo and was kind of over that and went back for a checkup, the doctor looked at me, shook his head, and he said, I am amazed. There is absolutely no evidence of any disease in your body. We came to the provision conference uh, that first time in 2016, and from there it just grew from there. We were actually part of another church and were very involved there. And after coming to provision and just learning more and then occasionally coming Saturday nights, we finally looked at each other and we're like, we have to go there and learn from these people. We were so hungry and wanted so much to learn more about these principles because if it's the kingdom, why we want it. And we knew about the kingdom, but we didn't understand the kingdom. I think it was in 18 when we went to Pastor Gary's Financial Revolution Conference in Atlanta. And while we were on the way down, one of our guys had an accident with one of the trucks. So we there had the opportunity to sow a seed. And we sowed a seed and this was in the middle of winter. This was in January. We went on to Florida for vacation then, and before we came home, we had the cash to buy a very good used truck, just like what we needed for the business. And that was our first big experience, experience with sowing a seed and seeing a harvest very quickly, even in the middle of winter, and that was very, very unusual for our business and for us to experience. We've always been tithers. We've always tithed, but we didn't understand what it means to sow a seed. And expect a harvest. And we grew up as farmer's kids, and we didn't understand that, but. It's been a family business with one or two other people coming in to help us. So we're just a small family business, but as we have learned these kingdom principles, are, we've just seen our profit margins go way up and just uh, blessed with good jobs that are profitable. In, in the year 2018, we were so blessed. We paid cash for more things and we paid off more debt in that one year than we even dreamed of paying off in three years' time. And 2018, was absolutely the most phenomenal year we've ever experienced, ever. Part of our dream is to do whatever we can to help this message get out, if that's supporting the ministry or whatever it looks like. Sowing seeds into fertile ground to us is very, very important. I mean, I can throw my seed anywhere, and if it's not fertile, it's not going to give me a harvest, and I feel like there's fruit here. It's not just Pastor Gary and Drenda talking about how to do things. There's fruit. Look at their family. To me, that's real fruit. So why wouldn't I want to be a part of that? That's how I think about partnership. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's fertile soil. And being raised on a farm, I definitely understand that. And that's where the seed produces a hundredfold. Mm -hmm. And Pastor Gary often talks about, um, as partners, you have the same reward. There's a mantle on them. There's an anointing on them. And if we're partners and we get the same reward, why wouldn't I want that? Wouldn't you prefer prospering versus being in poverty? And that's, I think that's God's heart. I thank God for fixing the money thing because that's, that was hope for us. Wasn't that an amazing story? We delight, as God does, in seeing transformation in people's lives, when people can dream again and they have vision the way God created them to have vision. He created vision for you as well. That's amazing. I mean, they were like everyone is. They're not seeing the kingdom function. They're just surviving, but they're believers. And then discover that the kingdom operates by laws, began to the same thing, study the laws and 
found out laws work every time. Yeah, just like a farmer, as they said. Yeah, they grew up farming and they understood sowing and reaping and how that process worked. And then, you know, I, I, I think Christians have been taught to sow for years, but they've not been taught how to harvest. They've not been taught how the process plays out, the whole process. And so understanding the laws of the kingdom take you down the whole pathway of understanding this happens here, and this happens here, and this is why it happens. Yes. This is how you tap into it. This is how you release it. This is how you receive it. Mm -hmm. Crucial, crucial knowledge you have to have yes. to understand. A farmer has knowledge, not just sowing. He knows the whole process. Yes, and just like you got confidence in hunting yeah. and, and using God's kingdom principles, they got confidence in their business. And now I see, uh, we just had yeah. a women's meeting and Ruth was praying uh, for new believers and praying for people and laying on hands. It's so beautiful when people get a whole picture of the kingdom. And so it's not just about your finances. It's not just about your success. It's in every area. Absolutely. And now what I see is that confidence just carries into well, another area, another area. You can't, it's beautiful. You know, people go to a restaurant, have a great meal, they want to tell people. Mm -hmm. When you discover the kingdom, we could not stop from telling people. Our life was totally transformed, and we had to tell people this is the greatest thing that ever happened, you know? So we were excited about it. But we want to pray with you right now. And so the first thing I want to encourage you to do is to put your faith towards God. What His Word says, understand the kingdom. I, I challenge you to become a spiritual scientist. Read the Bible differently and ask questions. Why did that happen? God has given you the keys of the kingdom. That's what Matthew 18 says. You have that authority. But we're going to agree right now. First thing I want to do is pray. We want to stop fear from yakking at you. And so in the name of Jesus, I bind fear from holding you back, holding you hostage, lying to you about who you are, lying to you about your future. I pray that you receive greater revelation of who you are and the kingdom of God, where you'll find freedom to dream again, freedom to step out in faith, and to enjoy what legally is already yours. Yes, we thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. And we just thank you, Lord, that everything that pertains yes. to life and godliness has been given to mm -hmm. us through your kingdom, Father. We just thank you for shedding that knowledge abroad in our hearts, that love of God, but also the principles that you've given us to live by, Father, because we do believe and agree with your word that we have all yes. things that pertain to life, that pertain to godliness, yes. and we walk in abundance, we walk in freedom, we walk in blessing, and the world takes note of your kids, your kingdom, and they come into the light. They come into the light of the yes. kingdom of God. We just thank you for doing that in every person's life as they're connecting with our faith. Uh, we're connecting as partners in the kingdom. We thank you, Father. Your word is going out and it's transforming lives. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to the ends of the earth. And we praise you for that in Jesus' yes, name. Yes. Amen. Hey, we want to encourage you to become a partner. Help us take the message to the world and we get to partner with you to see this grace of God transform everything, right? Everything. We'll be right back in just a minute and we'll tell you some more things happening this week. Hi, welcome to Fixing the Money Thing. I'm Gary Cassie, and we are talking today about business. In fact, my new book, Open for Business, these principles changed my life and they will change yours as well. And I've invited my son, Tim, to be with me today as yeah. he has walked this out personally and enabled to do things that are amazing. And he's gonna tell you about that, how they came to pass and how the principles that we teach about walking business out literally changed his life as well. Yeah. Tim, great to have you today. Yeah, I'm glad to be here today. And I've got to watch firsthand all these things happen, but everyone has dreams, you know? I mean, we talk to people at church and travel. Everyone has dreams, right? Yeah. Someday I'm going to blank. I want to have this. I yeah. want to have that. I remember, now you like the outdoors. You've always loved to hunt and fish and love the outdoors. And you married a girl that does well. Yeah. And I remember you guys talking that someday we want to own a multi-million dollar piece of property with, you know, 100, 200 acres that uh, we could own. That was your, that, uh, that's yeah. all I heard. That was your dream. But, at the, time, want, yeah. but at the time, Tim, you didn't have multi-millions right. so, of dollars. So how do you get, how do you get from where you are to take those steps, right? That's why I'm at, that's what you want to find out. That's what you right? got to find Let's out. find out. So God is faithful and I, I am just so thankful, but God is faithful with what? 
And that's what people miss. God is faithful to bring you opportunities. Mm -hmm. The problem is people don't recognize opportunities. Like what does an opportunity look like? And if you haven't seen it yet, guess what? You probably don't have eyes that recognize opportunities. That's right. And that's the trick. So, you know, I, I grew up in our household. You guys are entrepreneurial. And so I'm thankful to you and my mama uh, for, for instilling that in us. But what is an entrepreneurial mindset? An entrepreneurial mindset is someone who sees an opportunity that other people don't. That's right. And, uh, you know, being faithful with those little steps led us to where we are now, which we're super thankful for. But I go back in time and I look at some of those little, you know, those little moves that seemed... Uh, it was a lot of work and some of the things. I'll just tell, tell my story real quick, right? Um, you know, my my first house that I bought, I was praying for and believing How God How old for. were you when you bought it? I was 22, maybe 23, somewhere in there. So not that long ago. But uh, yeah, so praying for a house. and um, You weren't married yet. I wasn't married yet. And uh, this, this house listing, my realtor sent me and said, hey, it's listed with the wrong address. Now, when you list a house, if you put it up with the wrong address, it's not going <laughs> to go well for you, by the that's way. That's right. Listed with the wrong address, wrong square footage, wrong information, wrong town. Wow. Okay. And, and that's so three strikes, no, you're out. No one had hardly seen this house as it was sitting kind of on a, a quiet road off, you know, where you, you wouldn't drive this road unless you yeah. lived over there. And, uh, you know, so that was the first opportunity. Now, this house needed some work, and I, we, we put a lot of work into it. Alicia and I then got married uh, a, couple, a year later, Now, you I bought it, I bought for it for like, what, 30 Th $34,000, $34, which, uh, you it know. It was a foreclosure, I it think. It was a foreclosure. Yeah. It sat on the market, and every month it sat on the market, they slashed it by $10,000. no one showed up. Because they needed to get it out of there. <laughs> no one showed up. So, yeah, yeah it went from you know, $150,000, you know, uh, mortgage that they needed to satisfy. And they ended up selling it for $34,000 to me, which was great. Now I needed a little bit of work. And I think that's where sometimes people miss, they miss it because they're looking for their dream to come mm -hmm. and knock on the door and say, Hey, I'm your dream, but it's, it is your dream. It's just not matured yet. It's a, a step. People make the mistake of looking for money yeah. with not realizing how money shows up. Yeah. You know, I need a million dollars. No, you need a million dollar idea. Yeah. And so you were recognizing that this first house and you like building. I like working with you my like, hands. Yeah. And so you did a great yeah. job with that. I built Legos as a kid and then graduated into <laughs> RC airplanes. I was yeah. always building, building something, something, if yeah. you remember. So, so I you had still this house. Enjoy that. And yeah. so tell us what happened with the house. Well, so I, uh, you know, we were, we were faithful to do the odds and ends and the small things. And we did it on a, on a tighter budget. So if you have a tight budget, which a lot of people do, it's okay. You can, you know, you can be prayerful about those next steps. And a lot of times when you're wanting a big house, walk around your house and how's your, the, the house you're in look. Uh, have you painted the walls? Do you, do you take care of it? Some of the odds, and I mean, there's stuff you can do that doesn't require a lot of money. It requires a mindset and someone who's going to live in a nice house is going to be in a nice house, right? Yeah. So it's interesting. We, my wife and I drove by a house the other day that um, a friend had sold. And, you know, I had been at that. So I've been in that house before years ago and I, it's just trashed, trashed. And you're just, we drove by, you're like, what have they done to that place? Because it's a mindset issue. Yes. And maybe your house, maybe you got to get some things in order. So we stepped it up, right? So I, I sold that house. So I, I, you know, I had a lot of equity in it, right? I sold it and bought three houses cash with that money. Well, hey, wow. I fixed those three houses up. I sold those three houses, uh, you know, for a decent chunk of money. And I bought a, an apartment building, right? And that apartment building's worth uh, well over a million dollars today. And I paid 190000 for it, right? Mm. So it's, you know, that's a great investment, but it needed work, right? So now you're in that same, so you take on a $34,000 house and you sell it for, you know, 160000 And now you take that 160. dollars we bought three more houses and we fixed All those All needed up. help. All yeah. needed help. And you just kind of keep whatever your hand finds to do, right? As, as long as you're, you're, seeing opportunity. Mm -hmm. I so bought the apartment building and then I bought our, our other house, the one we, we sold more recently. And um, so I, the one that I bought more recently, I actually want to show pictures of that because it's uh, most people sh would and should run the other direction. Yeah, this house, your mother so, was like, <laughs> he down. actually bought that. <laughs> and I don't think you're even going to call it a house at that point. Right. So this, uh, whatever leftover of a house. <laughs> most of those things go off the rails and that's just the reality, right? When you buy a fixer upper, it, there's going to be a lot of stuff behind the scenes. So yes, mama, you were right. I should have tore it down. 
You don't know that till you start tearing into it and you're committed at that point. But we here, so yeah, check those pictures out, right? So the house is literally caving in. And um, so we bought this house and I, I bought it for the land value, right? So they sold it to me for what that, the, the mm, land yeah. was worth. I paid around 80 grand for it. This is going back five years ago, four or five years ago. And, uh, you know, some prices have changed significantly since then. And, uh, but, you know, we lifted it up and we reframed parts of it and we added on to it. And we did, we did a lot, of, lot of the work and we did it cash, right? And, um, you know, but that $80,000 house, I sold that for over 600, you know, almost, almost $700,000. So these little baby steps, you know, are, I mean, have you ever had $700,000 in your bank account? Well, you know, it, it, what, it didn't happen in one go. It started with being faithful to paint the walls in the first house and, mm -hmm. and making the most of it. And keep in mind, this hasn't been our business. You know, so I want to kind of point that out. I, uh, I have full-time other responsibilities and jobs and, and such. This has been side, you know, something that you do on the side when you go home and say, hey, let's, let's paint this room or let's, let's do this work here or let's lift the house up on stilts and yeah, put well, a new foundation under it. Yeah. So, you know, opportunities are around you and you probably have those opportunities in your life and they may be really small. Now, you may have arrived up here and those opportunities are maybe a little more intimidating and it takes that step of faith. So, you know, we sold now that house and we bought, bought our, our dream farm of, you know, a lot, yeah. of, a lot of land and a lot of spaces. 170, 172 acres, 72 and, acres yeah, five two houses and on multiple it, multiple houses on it. And, and now we're and starting over. And well, now you have work to do again. Work to do, yeah. But you already have a plan. And everyone yeah, talked to you. Okay, this is, I'm going to, yep. I'm going to rent this one out. I'm rehabbing that one. And yep. we're going to do that one here. And then we're going to build our dream house on top of this big hill. Right. You already have the plan. See, that's the difference. You already, you know how the thing works. Yep. And in the process, you're thinking about how to monetize everything yep. along the way to get to the dream. But most people don't even dream, Tim. Right. They, 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 they have a dream, but it's not a dream. Yeah. A dream is something you move towards. They, they've given up on the dream. They, they well, have a dream, but they just give up. They don't People do misalign it. some of the, the realities of a dream. A lot of people's dreams that they dream are the reward of their vision. And that's where now we get into this little bit of a tug of war because they say, well, what's your vision? Because the dream you have is the reward for mm -hmm, your vision mm -hmm. executed. And that's where then it gets hung up because they don't have a vision. They don't have it. And, uh, you know, so a vision is something you do that's going to, you know, here we are, we're, we're adding value. So if you don't have the add value mindset, whether you, it be at your employer or your relationships or any area of your life, then you're a taker. And takers yep. don't get rewarded because they're always taking. It's the ones that are creating a vision because that involves other people. That's right. And so I really, I really do encourage you. Uh, David fought the lion and he fought the bear. Then he fought Goliath and then he was in the palace. And most people want to go straight to the palace. That wasn't David's heart. David saw a need and was willing to say yes at each step of the way. He was, he was never petitioning to be king when he was out uh, no. tending sheep. That wasn't his heart. He was just being faithful with the assignment. And so I really encourage you, if you don't have a lion or a bear that you have, and I'm not meaning realistically. Literally, yeah, not literally. <laughs> but if you don't have those, those back stories of, okay, that, that, that was a, a lion or a bear that we were faithful and that we defeated, that's going to lead you to the next step. Maybe take a, a piece of paper out and even write those things down. And that's going to, first of all, testify of God's faithfulness when you were in those conflicts. But it also might, re you might recognize that you haven't had as many of those steps of faithfulness along the way and trying to just jump to the front of the line, at, you know, try to, trying to arrive up here isn't where you're actually at yet. Let's, um, that's good. Let's bounce back to the beginning though, yeah. because I think that most people have given up yeah. on dreaming. First off, they don't have time to dream. Secondly, their to-do list is already maxed out and they're already overwhelmed. Yeah. Number three, they can't see themselves in their dream. In other words, I always have a saying, if you can't see it, you can't seize it. Yeah. They, you see yourself in the picture of that house. You have the blueprint, you see it. But so many people cannot see them. They, they can admire that. Right. Oh, I'd love to have that. But they can't see themselves in it, they can't see them right. in that picture. To them, it's an impossible. So because they don't think it's possible, they discard it. They're not motivated to even examine right. how would I get there? Right. I should ask questions. I'd like to get, let's find out how to do it. 
And this goes back to way back here, way back here where you're saying David is a young man and uh, you were a young man and you, you saw these things happen, but they can't pick up on the ideas right? because they've already given up. In fact, I always say it this way. They say no before they ever even consider the yes. We've trained ourselves to say no before we even consider asking how right? because we're just so maxed out. And so, like you said, one of the first things you want to do is to write things down, be faithful where you're at, because what happens is your own personal capacity to get more done, uh, enable you to vision past where you're at, being faithful, you know, to organize, clean your bedroom, yeah. you know, you, you're faithful with the task in front of you, you learn how to handle more responsibility, which enables you to have a bigger vision. But so many people today don't, yeah. uh, don't dream. They they just they're satisfied to watch someone else's dream on the big screen, right? And plot and you know and that's great that's awesome, but never see that they're meant to be in the game, not yeah. just watch the Super Bowl. Well, I think one one thing you I think you said this this past week and you've said it multiple times. If you don't like your house, sell it. Yeah, if you don't, if you don't like it. your You're job, just, yeah. then where are you supposed to be? Right? Like people, uh, it, it is interesting how many people will just settle in a in a in a yes, situation, yes. a place, and a house that they can't stand, but there's no movement towards realizing something different. And I think that, yeah, you get, you get that vision kicked out of you and you're, you're trained to say no. Trained to um, say no. You know, now we're not, um, we're not saying that you don't use wisdom and you just, you know, but, but you have to know where you're at and, and what's going to get you to where you're supposed to be. And uh, even though taking that next step, right, of each time was a little bit intimidating. Oh, it takes so faith. The, the apartment building, let's yeah, tell that story faith, real yeah. quick. Um, I had been praying. Now, I'm, I'm on staff here at a, at a ministry, right? Now, we wanted to give more and be, be able to give more to the ministry. Well, the best way to do that is not to go to the board and say, hey, can I have a raise? So Alicia, my wife and I, we, we prayed and said, how can we, how can we be, be uh, in business? Because business is where money comes from. And how can we have business? My wife, now I had been reading books on real estate and we had been, you know, we had just done those, a uh, right. handful of those houses we had sold. And uh, she's like, well, let's buy, let's buy an apartment building. Now, this is probably the way most, uh, especially us guys, but we, our response. Well, that, you know, that's stupid. That, you know, or uh, I think my response is, babe, like people like us don't go out and buy apartment buildings. Like you got to have a lot of money to do that, especially million dollar properties. Yeah. You know? And, uh, but her words, her words stuck with me and I, I, I recognize that barrier was wrong because why say no before I even look? Yeah, I know it. And yeah. so, you know, that's, it's, it's a normal thing. And the, thank God for, for, he brings a spouse into your world <laughs> yeah. that slaps you around a little. <laughs> Alicia, <laughs> you need to wake up, wake up. Yeah. No, Alicia's uh, super sweet, but her words were in my mind when I drove by an apartment building that I could tell was being underutilized, right? It was, it, it was run down a little bit. You could tell that it was mostly vacant. Well, that's an opportunity mm. because people were looking for rentals. So why would this, this property have vacancies when pe it, it's a mismanagement issue? So I, um, I actually drove by it and, uh, oh, man, that would be a great property to buy someday. And, uh, those words that were in my mind, well, why don't we buy an apartment building? And I was just thinking someday. Yeah. I was like, well, yeah. why not? Why not now? Why not at least, at least if I find out what the guy would want for it, you know, because he's going to want, he's going to want seven, eight hundred thousand dollars for it, I'm sure, right? I don't have that kind of money. I turned around and I drove back and I got the number off the sign. I left a message. So I called and I left a message on the, the number. The gentleman called me back and he said, uh, you know, hey, I do have some that are for rent if you want to rent one. And so I told him, actually, I'm not interested in renting. I was curious if you thought about selling them. Now he, in his words were, I was just thinking about that this morning. So as we were praying for oh, opportunity, wow. he was thinking about selling his property. And now in my mind, I'm still not seeing this as an opportunity because what about the money, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, you still, yes, and that may yeah. be where you are. There's this grand opportunity and you're like, oh, but yeah, I just don't have what it takes. I don't have the money. But, oh, well, maybe next time. So I said, well, let's, let's meet out there. I'd love to, 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 to see the property and you can show me around and let's talk about it. So I meet the gentleman out there and he goes, well, you know, he showed me around. He goes, it needs a lot. It needs a bit of work. I'll tell you what. He's like, I'll, I'll sell it to you 
for what I paid for it 20, I was 25, 28 years ago. <laughs> and so he sells it to me at, you know, it just a, truly a blessing. And I needed a lot of work. And, uh, you know, so that was, we, we were like, let's do it. We sold, and we sold the house and bought that and, and kind of, um, you know, kept moving on. But now that's a lot of work, right? Now you have an apartment building. Yeah. Now you have multiple, multiple rooms that need done. And you're learning at each step of the way. You're taking on bigger, bigger projects. You know, now to replace windows isn't five or 6,000 or whatever we spent on the house. Now it's 30 or 40,000, right? These are bigger projects that you're funding and you're figuring it out. But, you know, just seeing God's faithfulness in, your, in the small steps in your story, exactly. you know he's going to continue to be faithful. And so when you say yes and you know, once again, you got to know you're in the will of God and where you're supposed to be and your heart was in the right place and, you know, you make that leap. But, yeah, so we have, we have a lot of these great stories, but all of that is um, – just a testimony of God's faithfulness. Yeah, and of you said yes. Bringing opportunities to us and us. That you looked through. for the opportunity. Yeah. There wasn't even a sale sign there. That's right. I yeah. mean, I mean, one day, uh, this is back in the, in the I, eight when the crash occurred. I had a multimillionaire <laughs> that I was visiting him. Yep. On the beach. He said, Now, if I were you, I would buy this property. Let me show you. He walked me down the beach. Here's this property for sale. It's foreclosed on. It has two houses on it, on the beach. On Florida, the beach. On the beach. In Florida. Oh, man. And I see the price is like 690000 Oh, my gosh. And yeah. I thought, man, I don't know. We had a lot of stuff happening, you know, and I just thought, you know, we just got a lot of things going on. <laughs> two houses on the beach <laughs> on for 600 the beach. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just we had so many money going out to different directions. And I I, I, I don't, I don't want to, I just, I got money going everywhere and, you know, didn't think right, right. right. Well, now, you know, today <laughs> this property is worth millions. I'm right? going to say, yeah, you can't touch millions. anything near, near so the beach God has for 600000 He's brought those same things to me, and I, I didn't recognize all of them. But I didn't recognize enough of them. Right. But every time I recognize one, you learn, Yeah. okay, I need, next time I'm going to be a little more I, yeah. I think when we get to heaven, there's going to be a log no. of all these moments. It's like, that was a God moment. That was a God moment. Tim, you got 4% of the God moments, which, you know, you're still doing better than a lot. I think there's going to be a lot of moments. I got some of them, but I missed a bunch of them. Waving, saying, hey, this is an opportunity. I missed a bunch. Yeah. You can ask my wife. She has a list of all of them. They had a, you, had a, you had a wealthy guy telling you to buy yeah, this property. Yeah, multi-millionaires. Hey, this, multi this is going to be worth millions, you know, and I just... Yeah. But uh, Drenda has, uh, we've had that same thing. She's now, you need to get, you know, she has wisdom. You, this would be a good buy, you know. Yeah. I didn't miss all of them. But one day, uh, a man of God told her, he said, listen, I'm trying, got from God, I'm trying to bring you houses and lands and blessings, but you're not receiving them. You guys need to change how you think. Yeah. And so, you know, coming out of uh, a history of poverty and debt, you know, you learn to be st you know, stringent, right? Yeah. You learn to be. And, I, and God had to teach me, listen, son, you know, I got, I got things for you. Don't, you, don't have to, you don't have to hold back. Just make sure you're in my will, in my step. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as we began to do that, uh, you know, things, we, we grabbed some of those deals. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit will illuminate those yeah. and show you. But it does take that to mindset. An entrepreneurial mindset is looking yeah. for those kind of opportunities, which goes back to my book, Open for Business. Uh, our life was changed by business. We were in debt six years, in ser nine years seriously in debt. And uh, our answer was, was business. Your answer was business. Yep. I mean, so many people, and you were even, that's part-time. You, you know, you had a part-time business. Yeah, exactly. That you was don't not... have to make the huge jump yeah. into a full-time business. But... You know, and, and you know, the, my rental properties, that's a, that income just keeps coming in, though. Every month. So it wasn't just a blessing then. It's a blessing Still now. Blessing. And as real estate in our local area is exploding, it's even a greater blessing, right? Yeah. Our, our, uh, our market's been blowing up around the area. And so holding that. And, uh, you know, if you have been trained in dysfunction, which we all yeah, have, by the way. that's a good term for it. Here's the, here's the reality check. You probably are walking by opportunities that God's sending you every day. And I really encourage you, get open for business. Get some of those. I read, I read a lot of different books. And uh, that also helped to equip me to say yes yeah. to that apartment leap because I had 
some history in reading books. So I encourage you, read books like Open for Business and start renewing your mind. If you came from a home that was a, not an entrepreneurial home and there was a restrictive mindset of everything was a no, you're especially going to have to dig yes, yes, into yes. God's Word and start renewing your mind yes. to, to God's Word and, and seeing the world for His. Because God's creative, right? And if His Spirit's exactly. in you, you're creative. We're creative. We have, we have a, a creative spirit, meaning we create uh, good things. And so, you know, you need to be creating or doing something. And so, you know, get, get some paint on that house. Look yeah. for the opportunities around you. Get some things in order and recognize that God's going to keep taking you in this Amen. journey He started with you. Well, you can get the book, uh, our website, and also I want to encourage you to come back here. Same place, same time. We're going to continue talking all the next few days about business, open for business, and about your future and how God wants to help you understand that you don't have to just wait around for money to show up. Yeah. You can create it. It's called business. See you next time right here on Fixing the Money Thing. <laughs>